there is a large argument out there that we had Bush because of you. Did you cost Al Gore the election? No, and Al Gore agrees. It's been 16 years, and by now, Ralph Nader is sick of answering that question. Sick of being called a spoiler. And I don't blame him. In this video, I will argue why I think Ralph Nader did not spoil the American presidential election of 2000. If you want to hear an argument that he did spoil it, please watch my friend Will's video on his channel, Political Junkie. While you're over there, be sure to subscribe. Okay, I commonly hear the myth that Ralph Nader, the legendary consumer protection activist, spoiled the election of 2000 by stealing votes that would have gone to Al Gore, the Democratic nominee. Well, that's crap. Ralph Nader did not spoil the election, and here is why. At the heart of the argument is what happened in Florida. There, just a few hundred votes separated the winner, George Walker Bush, from the runner-up. Al Arnold Gore. It was so close it took five weeks to sort out, and many demanded a recount. In Florida, as in nearly all other states, it's winner takes all. And so Bush got all the electoral votes there despite a very narrow victory, therefore winning the entire election. Instead of voters blaming, I don't know, Al Gore for losing in Florida, they blamed Nader. It's easy to see why they did. Nader got around 95,000 votes in Florida. However, once you dig deeper and begin to critically think it's not so simple. As it turns out, only around 24,000 registered Democrats voted for Nader in Florida, compared with the 308,000 registered Democrats, or 13% of all Democrats in Florida, who voted for George W. Bush. It seems to me that the 308,000 Democrats who voted Republican in 2000 hurt the Democratic Party much more than the 24,000 Democrats that voted for Nader. Oh, so as it turns out, Bush spoiled the election for himself there. But people speculate. What if Nader wasn't in the race? In 2006, UCLA published a study which analyzed 46 million decisions that people who cast ballots in Florida made in the election and found that just about 60% of Nader voters would have supported Gore if Nader wasn't in the race. They also found that Nader voters often voted for Republican candidates in other elections on the same ballots and that Pat Buchanan voters often voted for Democratic candidates in other elections on the same ballots. In other words, they found solid evidence that there were people who leaned to the right who voted for Gore and people who leaned to the left who voted for Bush. In addition, 76% of Nader voters in 2000 were not Democrats. In fact, they were mostly independents. Previous studies, which looked at Ross Perot's runs in 1992 and 1996, also found that Perot took votes away from both major party political candidates, not just one side or the other. Yeah, he got called a spoiler too. Writers like Bill Scher look at the same studies, including the 2006 UCLA one, and say, see, if it was only Bush and Gore in the race, more people who would have voted for Nader would vote for Gore instead. The major flaw with this argument is that it didn't happen. Nader was actually in the race. We could also pretend that Santa Claus was running for president, but that really wouldn't change what really happened. Nader really ran, and people voted for him, or against the other two. I hate the what if game. What if? What what if? What if? Quiet. It didn't happen. According to recent research, people are increasingly more motivated to vote against a candidate or party than for one. If this is true, we might assume that Nader voters were actually voting against both Bush and Gore. According to an exit poll in Florida by CNN, half of the Nader voters would have stayed home if he wasn't in the race. But here's another crazy fact. There were 10 different candidates that got more votes in Florida than the number of votes, 537, that separated Bush and Gore. Why does Nader get the blame when seven others could also be blamed? Earlier I said Bush actually spoiled the election, kind of joking around, but Bush sure didn't spoil the election as much as Al Gore did. Gore was probably a historically weak candidate. One group that typically voted Democratic in Florida were Caucasian women, but Bush won 53% of their vote. Gore was the current vice president in a popular administration and a prosperous economy. Logically, one could assume it should have been an easy victory for Gore, yet he couldn't even win in his home state of Tennessee. He lost in Tennessee by more than 50,000 votes. It is rare for a candidate to lose their home state and go on to win the election. Only three presidents have done that in a American history. I could go on. There are other arguments that Nader didn't spoil the election, such as the fact that the Supreme Court got political and halted the recount in Florida, or the flawed voting procedures, but those are not directly related to a vote
vote for Nader, and more so about how there are bigger problems with the entire system. The argument that Nader spoiled the election relies heavily on the concept of opportunity cost. It assumes that all votes that were cast for Nader would have automatically went to Gore if Nader wasn't an option. But as I pointed out earlier, this assumption is false because most of the people who voted for Nader in 2000 either would have voted for Bush or not voted at all. But should we assume to begin with? Of course not. There are too many variables. According to USC political science professor Matthew Jones, because the tiny vote difference for Bush and Gore in Florida falls within the margin of error, it is simply not possible to know for sure why Gore lost there. However, it's easy to understand why those who support the current Republican and Democratic duopoly would want to keep speculating and keep fueling the myth. After all, if we can blame Nader, then we can blame future third-party candidates for acting as spoilers to make sure they never have a chance and to convince people that they are just is wasting their vote if they vote for them. But you should vote for the candidate you like, not just vote against a candidate. Whoa, what a concept. Voting for someone I like? And candidates should earn your vote. They aren't entitled to it because you're afraid. But Mr. B, don't you know we have a first past the post system? Yeah. So how about the winner take all be the person that we like, not the lesser of the two evils? Want to know how we have two of the most despised major party presidential candidates? candidates in history, voting for the lesser of two evils for generations. And it's easy to place blame when we shouldn't. But if we're going to place blame, how about we place blame on the Bush voters for voting for Bush? That seems logical to me. I'll end with Nader's own words. He said in a recent op-ed, quote, all candidates on the ballot try to get votes from one another. Either they are all spoilers or none of them are. Arrogantly applying that word only to minor party candidates is to treat them as second class citizens and set them up as scapegoats in close elections, unquote. Don't forget to check out Will's video arguing why Nader did spoil the election and subscribe to his channel. Nader's decision illustrates why your third party candidate is probably playing you for a fool. Thanks for watching.